Welcome to online worship at St. Lucas United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. My name is Reverend Kelly Archer, and I am the Associate Minister at St. Lucas, and it is a joy to welcome you into a time of worship this day. Our Senior Minister, Reverend Bill Smoots, is on vacation. And we certainly hope that this is a time of rest and renewal for Pastor Bill and his family. During today's worship service, we have dedicated a time for blessing backpacks and also devices for students and teachers among us returning to school, be it online or in person. And so if you have a student or a teacher in your house, please invite them to bring their backpacks and devices and gather around as Michelle leads us in a time of blessing. Then, in the e-blast, you'll find a link to claim a device sticker from St. Lucas to remind you of this blessing, to remind you of the church that loves you, and to remind you that God is with you as you begin the journey of a new school year. In addition to this video worship, we are still gathering on Sundays at 9 a.m. in the pavilion at St. Lucas for an outdoor morning prayer service with social distancing and masks required. We know we will be meeting this way at least through Labor Day and then await further counsel from the Coronavirus Task Force beyond that date. I noticed this weekend's forecast might include rain on Sunday morning, so I'd like to mention that if we ever needed to cancel that service, an e-blast would be sent. Please check your email in the event of inclement weather. And now, let us begin our time of worship together. Let us pray this opening prayer as we center our minds and hearts into this special time of learning, praise, and song, all for the glory of God. Let us pray. O oh God, we gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us this day fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Thank you.
So can anyone tell me what a blessing is? What is a blessing? A blessing is a way that we recognize something that God has already done for us. A blessing points to something or to someone that is normal and ordinary and reminds us that God is powerfully present with and through each one of us. So if we're here today for a blessing for our backpacks and our devices that we're using this year, our, our iPads, our computers, is that, does that mean that we're recognizing something that God has already done for us? Well, what exactly is that? Does that mean that God created backpacks and laptops and iPads? And that God created schools and decided that all kids have to go to school? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that's what God had in mind. I believe that what we're here today to recognize is that God created every one of us with one big thing, a brain. And a brain that is giving every one of us the ability to think, to think about other people, to think about how to learn and make new things and learn new things, to think about how to figure things out and solve problems, not just math problems, <laughs> to think about how to teach others when they need help, to think about, oh, let's see, to think about how a school works and how we can help with the organized part of it, to think about how to make sure everybody is fed and make sure everybody feels safe, and to think about one really big thing, to think about how we can do a better job of loving each other. We are here today to thank God for giving us brains and the ability to think and to thank God for places like school and the kitchen table where we can go to learn and use our brains and to thank God for teachers and students and bus drivers and administrators and crossing guards and cooks and maintenance people and parents and grandparents teaching at home and tech support professionals and all the other people who make it possible for us to use our brain like God expects us to. I'd like now to invite us uh, to have a prayer of blessing. And, and for this prayer, I'd like it to be a responsive prayer. I'm going to say a line uh, of prayer, and then you say that prayer back, you say that line back, and together we will uh, offer the prayer. Let us have a prayer now for blessing. God, we thank you for our brains. Be with us now at the start of another school year, as strange as this one is. Be with us so that we may learn and grow and become the people you want us to be. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for this day comes from Romans, chapter 8, 
verses 14 through 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My sister is my gift from God. Or maybe I'm hers since she was born first. Katie is my older sister, and that meant she was a font of wisdom to me growing up. She experienced everything first and just a couple of years ahead of me, so she could answer all my questions about school or driving or dating. She even knew how to navigate mom and dad better. After all, she had known them longer. This dynamic of ours changed, though, when I got married first and had children before her. So about the time that Katie was expecting her baby, I became a font of wisdom for her. Now I was the one who had experienced parenting first, so she came to me to talk about nursing and teething and sleep schedules. This shift in our roles enriched our relationship, and these days we are equal parts sisters and friends. And we found that even though she has a preschooler and I have a high schooler, there are actually a lot of similarities. Both stages encompass the struggle for independence and identity for the children. And both stages can be particularly wearing for the parents. Of course, there are also some differences. My niece Emily clings to Katie's leg and demands her constant attention. My sons are less and less interested in my presence. We are solidly in the stage where they want to be self-sufficient, and though they still may rely on me for a ride, they are happiest to be dropped off on their own. Where a preschooler will talk your ear off, it can feel like pulling teeth to get a teenager to open up. But that doesn't mean I don't try. And by try, I mean trick. Let me explain. If I were to ask my sons if they wanted to sit down at the kitchen table and talk to me for an hour, they'd roll their eyes and pretend to gag, like you do. But usually, if I ask them if they want to play cards, they're all in. Gin rummy is what we play, and one hand can usually turn into ten hands, especially if I have some snacks out and put their playlist on the kitchen speaker. The next thing you know, we've been sitting at the kitchen table talking for an hour. This just happened the other night, and as I was washing our dishes afterwards, I was feeling proud of myself for tricking them into some quality family time. Thinking about how when parenting gets tricky, sometimes you have to be a trickster. My mom did the same thing back in the day. She had this knack for bringing up important discussions when we were in the car and teenage Katie and I couldn't escape. I guess talking to our mom wasn't actually as painful as the broken bones and scraped skin we'd have had we tried to escape the moving vehicle. Then, 
That's when I started to think about God and wonder about the lengths God must go to to get us to open up and talk and listen. Sure, there are times when we are like preschoolers and we talk God's ear off, praying constantly and crying out for God in all of our needs. But then there are times when we are like teenagers, distracted by the world and our own lives and less likely to text God back. But that's when God must get creative to get our attention in tricky ways, just like I do with my children and my mom did with hers. If you haven't had a good, long talk with God lately, I wonder if you might notice God longing for that connection and ways in which God might be inviting you into that time of communication. I use snacks and playing cards and playlists on my sons. What might God be using on you? How might God be enticing you to just come and sit and be a while? Because if it's been a while, I bet God is practically tap dancing in your life for your attention because that's how parents are. They want to hear from you and hear all about your day. They want to know about your dreams and fears, your joys and your concerns. And they want you to hear some things too, that they love you no matter what, and they'll always be here for you. Now, I know not all parents are loving, just like not all teenagers are hard to talk to, but there's enough loving parents and sulking teenagers around that we can understand those examples. That's really the purpose of all of the metaphors for God we find in the Bible. Our ancient authors from the psalmists to the gospelers to the apostle Paul who wrote the passage we just read in a letter to the Romans used literary devices like metaphors and similes to help describe the indescribable, God. Like Job, we weren't there when God moved over the firmament or hung the stars. And so there's just so much about the divine we can't comprehend. We rely on descriptors and comparisons to help us wrap our human minds around the God's mind. So when we read in the book of Isaiah that God is our potter, we can understand how God molds and shapes us. And when we read in the 18th Psalm that the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, we can observe the stability and strength of our God. God as our Father is used throughout the Bible and by Jesus himself to help us understand the relational nature of God and that we are all children of God. This week, that parental metaphor was helpful for me to imagine God waiting to hear about my day the way I am waiting to hear about my son's day. School just started this week, and I bet they have a lot to say. So I'm going to go cut up some watermelon and set up the Scrabble board. In this competitive family, no one can pass up the chance to be the reigning Scrabble champ. But then afterwards, when their attention returns to the Xbox and their phones and their friends, I'm going to go into my room and pray and tell God all about my week too. Hopefully, I'll do so with the enthusiasm of a preschooler, just bursting with news and curiosity. I pray you might do the same. Amen.
as children of God, we now turn toward God in a spirit of prayer, sharing the joys and concerns of our lives, and indeed, the joys and concerns of the world. As we enter into this time of prayer, I seek yours for Debbie, our church receptionist, who was involved in a terrible motorcycle accident while vacationing this week in Colorado. At the time of this recording, Debbie is in the hospital awaiting another surgery, a leg amputation. Our thoughts and prayers surround Debbie and Dave and her children, as well as the doctors and nurses whom we pray have the hands and feet of Christ at this time. I also want to draw your attention to those among us who are on our church prayer list. In an effort to protect their privacy in this recorded worship, I won't say their last names, but I refer you to the church e-blast for further information. We pray for Norman and for Robert, for Paul and for Ruth, for Tom and for Phyllis, for Mark and for Paul, for Thelma and for John. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray together. O oh God, hear our cries for those who hunger and for those who are full, for those who need you desperately and for those who feel no need for you, for those who wrestle with the impact of being your blessed children and for those who are unaware of your offered blessings. For those concerns too difficult to express, hear our cries, O God of our salvation, and hear us as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Thank you for joining us in worship this day at St. Lucas United Church of Christ. It has been so good to be together in spirit. Our worship service may be ending, but our service to God and to one another as neighbors continues this day and always. Hear now this benediction. Go forth from this time remembering who you are and whose you are, for you are beloved and you belong to God. Go in peace.